sheep, maybe timid animals, but just try removing its woolly fleece. As any shearer will tell you, the job requires a strong back and fast hands. What do you want? About 80,000 people who used to live near the Fukushima Daiichi plant are still not allowed to go home. High levels of radiation from the March 2011 nuclear accident are keeping them away. But workers in some areas have managed to complete decontamination efforts. When do you want it? <laughs> and officials with the central government say about 270 evacuees can now return to their homes. Who's your daddy? <laughs> Officials lifted the evacuation order for the eastern part of Kawauchi village. 274 residents can go back to their hometown and reopen businesses. Hey, you want it? <laughs> the order is still in place for these municipalities around the plant. People in some areas are still not even allowed to enter or stay overnight. Officials say roads and other infrastructure in Kamauchi village have been rebuilt and Unity utility services are up and running. But not all former residents are expected to return. Some people are concerned radiation levels are still too high. Others complain not enough shopping and medical services will be available. This is the beginning of our recovery. Do you, you ever sit around and say, I cannot believe what my mouth just said. So, we want the central government to support us. Yeah, because I, I just wondered if, if after you said that, you thought, wow, it's really hard to take back stupid. This is the second time officials have lifted an evacuation order since the accident. In April, residents of a district in Tamura City were allowed to return home. Scientists from Japan and abroad have been trudging through the abandoned fields and forests of Fukushima looking for clues. They're trying to find out how the radiation released by the damaged nuclear plant there is affecting animals and insects. And some are paying particular attention to how or even if low-level contamination is affecting organisms. NHK World's Craig Dale has the story. Got him. This is how biologist Timothy Mousseau spends much of his time in Japan. Bug hunting in Fukushima. The U.S.-based scientist has set up his mobile lab about 30 kilometers east of the Fukushima Daiichi nuclear plant. He's working to find out how insects, birds and other organisms are affected by different levels of radiation. Some organisms seem to show consequences and others show no signs whatsoever. Mousseau and his colleagues started looking for those signs in July 2011, a few months after the nuclear accident. They've come back to Fukushima Prefecture again and again to survey 400 locations. They record radiation levels and note changes in diversity and abundance, among other things. Mousseau is particularly interested in the effects caused by low-dose radiation. They may be small, they may not be of profound significance, uh, but they are measurable and real. And this is what we really need to know. Uh, you know, at what, at what resolution is required to, to, to really um, consider an area safe or not. Mousseau's work in Japan has built on his 14 years of research in Ukraine. He's been studying the uninhabited area around the crippled Chernobyl nuclear plant. He's observed even low-level radiation has a negative impact on the abundance of birds and mammals and disrupts development among a variety of organisms. This gives us a, you know, some ability to predict what the consequences could be for human populations, even those living in much lower uh, levels of radiation. Scientists studying the impact of the nuclear accident are looking for patterns. They want to see how different levels of radiation are affecting not only individual species, but the entire food chain. Japanese entomologist Yoshiko Ayabe is also working in Fukushima, scouring the forests and collecting samples. I think it's necessary to look at areas that are less contaminated. 
In the lab, Ayabe is trying to paint a picture of how radiation is making its way up the forest food chain. Radioactive particles from Fukushima Daiichi fell on trees and made their way into the soil. Plants absorbed them, then insects ate those plants and other insects ate those insects. Ayabe's results show contamination is relatively low in worms, crickets and horseflies, but higher in spiders, an apex predator. She says she needs to do further research to find out what that means for the entire forest ecosystem. We have data about Chernobyl, but not about Fukushima. Are the situations the same? We must study to get answers. Timothy Mousseau says it will take up to a decade of rigorous work to really understand the impact of the Fukushima nuclear accident. He's calling for a greater investment in research. We can actually answer the questions that people want the answers to, which is, how big an effect does this radiation have? How much radiation is required in order to show an effect uh, of some significance? And so Mousseau will keep coming back to Fukushima in search of answers, to observe how a man-made disaster is playing out in nature and to help figure out what it could mean for people living in this area. Craig Dale, NHK World, Fukushima, Japan. Sheep may be timid animals, but just try removing its woolly fleece. As any shearer will tell you, the job requires a strong back and fast hands. Australia, the world's largest exporter of wool, is finding those skills increasingly hard to come by. NHK World's Hiromi Kurosaka reports. The buzzing of the electric clippers. In Australia, this is the sound of summer and the shearing season. Some sheep weigh more than 60 kilograms. This job requires strings, speed and skill. Veteran shearers can remove all the wool in under a minute, but their services are increasingly hard to come by. The problem is a shortage of shearers. Many have hung up their clippers to go work in the booming mining sector. At last count, there were fewer than 4,000 in the country, down from 10,000 20 years ago. The shearing industry is not as, as many young blokes coming on. 28, 30 years ago, there'd be you know, a dozen young blokes screaming to get into the shearing industry, but uh, we don't see that today. Anxious to reverse that trend, Industry officials launched a course to train a next generation of shearers. Fifteen young recruits are taking part. Most of them are in their teens and twenties. Macaulay Gleason is 16 years old. He just graduated from junior high school. I wouldn't say it's easy and I wouldn't say it's hard. It's pretty good. I like it. Most of my family has been shears, so I thought I'd keep it going. This is his first try at clipping wool. The sheep is struggling hard. He has trouble controlling the razor and ends up nicking the animal's ear. Macaulay's grandfather was a shearer for more than 40 years. The two are very close. Pop, pop's taught me a lot. So, yeah. But one day you're going to become a, a gun shearer, wouldn't you? Yeah, I hope so. <laughs> I hope so. It takes, takes time though. Training more workers is one strategy. Here's another. Watch how the wool is removed from this sheep, as simple as taking off the jacket. The secret is this chemical solution. It was developed jointly by an Australian company and a Japanese soy sauce maker. The first step is to inject a sheep with a chemical. It is then covered with a net and released. A natural protein in a solution causes the sheep to shed its fleece. A month later, 
the fluffy coat and the net come off together in one easy motion. No nicks or cuts. Uh, there's less stress on the animal, but to me it's the benefit of, of watching that sheep run out of the shed with a beautiful flat skin, knowing that the wool is really good. The chemical method does not require skilled workers, a big advantage. But it does require a few extra steps. Sharing the traditional way still has the upper hand, at least for now. Australia's woolsheds are buzzing for another summer. The search for alternative continues. Hiromi Kurosaka, NHK World, Sydney. Well, the wool removing solution is made from a protein that exists naturally in sheep, and the Australian government has tested it. And it says the chemical has no side effects and is safe to use. What do you want? When do you want it? How do you want it? Who's your daddy? What do you want? When do you want it? How do you want it?